and it just required me me guitar practice because I'll do some guitar practice and if anything happens that'll be of interest maybe it would be best if it was available I don't know I'm a pirate this morning I haven't had any caffeine but certainly a part of it the F, F is just a bard E <laughs> There's no better way to make it happen. <laughs> I mean, I understand. I get I get that there's no better way to make it happen, but come on, guys. At least... <laughs> it's just the same chord. This is the first... It's, it's also the first chord that I was ever taught. Was the, the bard F or, or the E. Because you can take it up and down the neck anywhere you want, and it... It maintains, um some degree of tonality so you can sort of fake you can sort of fake being able to perform chord progressions without performing any chord progressions but just by taking your bar chord and sliding it up and down the neck and so i i learned to do that obviously i've lost some of the the hand strength that i had gained to do that which you can tell by the lack of clarity in my playing it's so fuzzy and shit. Not able to easily squeeze my index finger down and bar that whole fret effectively. Easily, yet. I can do it if I force it. Like, if I if I really think about it and I push in and I... Even then... Ah, there's a bit of weakness in that portion of the grip. One form of training on a body part or a... a an element of your physicality does not transfer to all other forms of training on that body part. This seems patently obvious and like, no shit. But what I'll say is this, I've got pretty darn good grip strength. Like if you test me on a dynamometer, I've got pretty good grip strength. Um, and that's from deadlifts. That's from picking up heavy things off the ground and from training grip. My grip strength is pretty good. But my fingertip grip strength if I were to do like rock climbing tests where I'm squeezing with just my fingertips is way lower like than you would expect because I'm, I'm specialized at gripping barbells. Um, and my ability to do this, like clamping strength with the index finger against the fret of the guitar is also less than you might expect. Um, cause it's more specific and, requires a different organization of musculature. I'll probably have an easier time acquiring that grip strength than someone who was untrained, like completely untrained, had never done any grip work in their life, was really weak on dy dynamometer, etc. I'll probably be able to like leverage some of my existing strength toward it, but it's still a specificity thing and you have to train specifically for the things that require specificity. I did some guitar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bow bow. Chica chica. Chica chica. Oh, I got a store. These are the old drawings. Slicing through reality. Castles in the sky. Ah, bochi 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 bochi. Mochi mochi mochi. Mmm, mochi. Mochi sounds good. Oh, I wish I had. Fuck. Ah, oh, I wish I, <laughs> I wish I had more sticky rice. Then I could make, I could pound it into mochi with my non-existent mochi pounder. Down came the rain and washed away the mochi. She was really fucking sad because she wanted to rock. Welcome everyone. I'm Tia Boo and I am here for mochi the rock. Uh, we're on episode eight. It has rained. It has rained. It rained last night. Um, it was actually supposed to rain all day today, and the weather forecaster was wrong. So, I was kind of kind of looking forward to it raining all, all day, and it didn't rain all day. But it is raining like a motherfucker for Pochi, and that's sad, because they were going to have their concert. And I don't actually know if they aren't going to have their concert, or, or what's going to go on there. It's obviously an obstacle, but people come out for, to concerts in the rain all the time. Uh, just it's in downstairs inside a club do you go into the place um you check your coat or leave it on a table somewhere or something like that I, I i don't know what's gonna happen though maybe their concert will get totally rained out and that would be super sad 
last time on Bochi, we went to Bochi's house. It was it was very silly because Bochi took it way way too seriously, and it ended up being kind of wholesome and heartwarming, as Bochi often does. Um, her parents got to see that she really does have some real, real friends, and she got to experience some time with her real friends, and some people pointed out in the comments that by the end of the last scene, where she sort of turns into, turns into Ash, they're sort of playing along with her, um, delusions instead of trying to stop them or get in the way of them, and that demonstrates some degree of progress, and I, I can see that perspective. We'll see if that continues as we move forward into the show, um, I don't know if it's the best idea to to like foster those those feelings of helplessness, but it's friendship, and that's the that's the big import. That's the, the on the all the layered things that we could criticize or talk about or 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 judge. Uh, they're there, and they're there for Bochi, and that's fucking great because the alternative is nobody being there for Bochi, and that's a pretty easy alternative to slip into. Um. All you have to do is stop contacting the people around you, and you can watch yourself over the course of a couple months slip into that reality rather quickly. So it's important to be there for the people that you're friends with, and Bochi's friends are certainly there for her, and uh, and therefore, <laughs> in general, all of it, all, all the whole picture, the whole insanity. Um, which is just great because we all need, we all need some friends like, uh, like Nijika and Kita to come over and, um, just observe, just observe. And in part that, you know, it gives us back, uh, uh, we need the reflections of other people in order to understand ourselves, to understand where we're crazy and where we're not. And... If you're just alone and you don't have anything to push against, any any social repercussions, any social repercussions isn't the word, social reflections to demonstrate to you who you should be, how you should be, how you shouldn't be, because they give you a look that's like, what the fuck are you doing? If you don't, if you don't have that, you can really quickly spiral out into like the dark room with beer bottles everywhere and you're just in your tiny closet and scared of everything. And that's not the one. That's not the way. So it's good that Bochi has these people. It's by Bochi plus humans equals better Bochi. Nice. You plus humans might equal better you. Maybe. Yeah, a crazy theory. Maybe a true theory. I don't know. We're going to have a concert. Concert got rained out. Uh, episode is titled Bochi the Rock. Um, drawing of the day. Uh, uh, this is one where I went in with no idea, uh, whatsoever. So just see, fucking paper, goddamn. Um, uh, uh, Mobius pathways of genetic material with little people wandering around on them. Something like everybody walking their own pathway. Like the, the pathways may be determined to some extent by your underlying structure. You're limited by what you are. You know, humanity, being human is having limitations in some extent, in some way. Um, but you still have a lot of intersecting choices of ways to go. And you're marching along on something much greater than yourself. Something like that came out as an idea. I don't know. I, I have been listening to Dawkins, so there's been some... Genetic and biological ideas floating around in my brain space. Ping, 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 ping. Um, that's the drawing of the day. Uh, simple girls, they exist. I'm so, I'm so happy about it. I'm so happy about that. They're so pretty. They're so pretty. I mean, look at these freaking girls. They're so pretty. Ah! Ah! And I, I get to keep them on my desk because I made, because I made them. Uh, it's, it's great. I, I, I think it's great. I need to do more paper pals. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. In terms of paper pals, I ran a poll a little while ago, and Simple Gear won the poll. I had already started working on these, but I, I ran a poll a little while ago. Probably the thing to do is something Ava related because um, it's missing. And honestly, I started I started working on a series of Ava paper pals before I had to move out of my dad's house, and I had to leave the I, I left the work behind. 
Um, I guess I didn't have to, but I did leave it behind. And that's something that's just stuck. So maybe I should work on that. Anyway, I think that checks all my boxes for the morning. I did pull up and skim through the comments on the last episode of Bochi because there was a comment on the last week's episode of Bochi that um, I thought was really poignant, but it seems to have been deleted or maybe I imagined it in a fever dream. I, I don't know. One one or the other. Um, but it was it was somebody expressing a... First, a, a desire to live, which is good, good, yeah, yeah, this living thing is pretty cool, it, it's great, and um, there's no need to speed the process along if you're, if you're looking at non-existence with uh, envy, there's no need to speed it along, you'll get there eventually, you know, you'll, you'll walk down your semi-determined path, and you can change paths, and you can go a lot of directions that you don't think that you can go, because you're pretty awesome. I mean, I don't mean awesome in the sort of Americanized, easy, easy speaking manner of awesomeness. I mean awe-inspiring. <sighs> you exist, and you're, you're manifest, and you have fingers, and they can play guitar, and and you might not know if they can play guitar because you might not have picked one up and maybe you should and you can draw and you might not know if you can draw and you might be able to so you should pick up a pencil and try but the person was expressing that uh, a, a sort of very relatable malaise uh, a combination of confusion about what the future holds for them and where they're going and why they're going there mixed with uh, a questioning of whether there's a point in doing so at all. Like, why go forward? It seems like it's pointless. It sort of sucks. There's suffering everywhere. I keep hurting. It keeps hurting. So I wanted to go and find that that, that comment because it was related to Bochi, and, and it was poignant. And unfortunately, I think that the person may have been embarrassed about their comment and deleted it. And that's that's unfortunate because I think that in the past where when we've discussed pieces of expression like that, which is what a comment like that is, it's somebody compelled to type something out because they feel like they might be able to make some kind of a connection and they're not really sure if they will, but it's like a, 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 a reaching out with hope. Um, when we've evaluated those before, it's been the case every single time that the process of speaking it out to a broader audience has uh like shone a light upon both the person saying it and on the audience themselves and has caused to reveal from the woodwork all of the people who feel somewhat the same way and are in a strange sense put at ease by the fact that someone else feels the same way so While I can't go and grab the comment and read through it and communicate directly with this individual, I hope you hear me if you're out there. There's no need to speed it along. The purpose might not be obvious. Might never be conscious. You might never realize what the point is. But if you presume from the outset that there might be a point, what if that could make all of the the shitty part worthwhile what if you engaged with your life and existence with the prima facie like on the face of it so before you look deeper into it prima facie supposition proposition proposal belief that it might be worth something and and uh, not that in its current state it might have value, but that it might be capable of, of transforming into something that would have value. Maybe both. Maybe it has value in its current state, and it could transform into something that has more value than you could imagine. It seems to me that if you approach life, existence, suffering, pain, death itself with that in mind you open the door for the possibility that it might be so. 
So, well, if you're going to do that, what do you do? I'm bad at following this advice, but I'm going to make it anyway because I know that I know that it's right. E even if I'm failing continuously to 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 manifest it and and make it true for myself. First, treat yourself like you have some worth. Like you're capable of doing something great 20 years from now. Maybe you're not great right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, reasonable. Maybe every day is a, a pit of despair and suffering, but if you treat yourself like maybe 20 years from now, you could be the greatest guitarist, right? Like Bochi does in some, in some strange sense. She sort of fake believes it at first, but she comes to real believe it. Well, if you, if you were in charge of nurturing and taking care of the greatest mathematician of the next decade or whatever, right? Like, whatever it is that you're, you might end up being, which is anything, almost. You'd take some care with that person. And you'd try to not traumatize them too much. And you'd try to prevent them from losing themselves in the drinking and the, and the drugs too much. And you'd maybe try to make sure that they had some, some relationships and some connections to people around them. And you'd try to make sure that they it, it consumed adequate nutrition and performed adequate exercise so that their physical, physiological body didn't just fall apart because it just falls apart on its own. If you don't, if you don't do those things, it just falls apart. And all you have to do is to look around at the people who are 40 plus around you and you'll see the massive variations in general quality of existence that are determined almost exclusively by your actions. So do some of the things that you would have a person who you were taking care of do some of the things that prevent them from falling apart completely so that they can get to that finish line where they do something cool. There's lots, lots of people don't do something really cool until they're 50, until they're 80. <laughs> you know, we have, we have interesting things coming out of 80 year olds and we didn't used to have 80 year olds. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's some, there's some reasons to take care of that other person. And well, that other person is just you. So if you treat yourself like you have some worth, and maybe that worth isn't obvious to you at the present, but could be manifest in the future. How would you treat that person? Uh, that's a, a hard series of questions, but once you start asking the question, you immediately know the things in your life that you're not doing to make that happen, or that you're actively working against yourself on. And then it seems like once you get those physical things into place, like scheduling things, uh, eating more effectively, avoiding the drugs and the alcohol a little bit, you know, at least having a bit of a modicum on them. Um, you become significantly more capable of seeing the light because mood follows action and uh, mental state follows behavior. So if you start performing the behaviors as if you were doing well, you actually start doing well. And then you can figure out more of the behaviors to perform that will make you do better and pfft, virtuous spiral straight up. I mean, straight, straight up. Where, where, how else would that go? So this person who wrote this comment was, I don't like to use the phrase because it's the wrong phrase. Yeah, it's, it wasn't a cry for help. It didn't feel like a cry for help, but it was... A crying out, certainly, and an expression of turmoil, of internal strife, of not knowing. And it struck me because it resonated with a lot of the strife and not knowing that exists within me. And immediately I had answers to bring to bear to it. Because I had done the research and looked into these answers and had some years to struggle and, and really thought about some of these things deeply and inform myself based on various texts, including anime and media and all sorts of things, the way that every person does, because we're all trying to consume and acquire modes of being that might manifest better things in our life or might enable us to, to live with some degree of 
pride, of self-respect, perhaps. Um, and I immediately had those answers and immediately recognized that I was not fulfilling my own <laughs> promises to self to, to put those answers into practice. And so I am really grateful for this person whose username I don't know because I don't remember and whose comment I can't go and look at because it seems to have been deleted. I'm really grateful to them for sharing their struggle because it reminded me of mine and it reminded me of the answers that I've come to about that, about mine, and it reminded me or illuminated for me the ways in which I am not living up to those still and continuously and will continue to not live up to those for a long time. Like, I don't know if there's ever going to be a point where I, I look at myself and I'm like, I'm doing everything I can. I don't I don't think so. But I can do more. And it seems to work. My my mental state since starting to treasure hunt and record more videos and consistently draw things and consistently like attempt stuff and consistently going back to the gym. God, fucking amazing. My mental and physical well-being has immediately and obviously altered into a positive direction. Immediately. Doing more, not less. Less is inertia, is falling apart, is... Less doesn't make more, more. So I don't have answers from like a place of wisdom for a person who's struggling with purpose and identity and um, reason for being in the face of the horror of the future and the tragedies of the past and the, the sheer suffering of the present, perhaps. Um, I don't have a, a, a lot of, I don't come from a place of wisdom. I come from a place of not knowing but presupposing and I, I my supposition my proposal really is that if you treat yourself like someone who the world might need then you can do you can do pretty well okay i wanted to I wanted to talk that through because that comment really did impact me. And and again, I'm really grateful for it because it's mm, it's that communicative thing that that well, it lets me get some social reflection too. I've got some people around me, but some in some ways I share a lot more with the camera than I do with the people I see face to face. And it's it's always odd or or striking when one of them is like, hey, so I saw your video about whoa, oh, all right, <laughs> interesting. Cause it's like, oh, you've listened to me talk about insane shit for an hour now. And I wasn't I wasn't a part of that conversation <laughs> in in the in the time that you experienced it. It's like that was me talking, but I wasn't a part of the the back, oh, it's so weird. It's so weird. But I'm, I'm really grateful for it. I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk. I'm grateful for the opportunity to listen. I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to get responses back like that. Where somebody is able to, to open themselves up. And it seems like it's a direct result. It's like, the more open, honest, and and directed that I can be, the more open and honest and 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 talking about important things, things that like really matter, the more other people do the same. And it seems to really impact their lives. And it seems it obviously really impacts mine. It's like that's cool. More of that. More more of that. So anyway, thank you, whoever you were, for that comment. I'm sorry that you've deleted it. Um don't delete yourself, please.
despite everything, being is good. Even when your damn concert gets rained out. So let's see how Bochi and friends handle that situation. And what the situation really is, because I don't really know. I've got episode 8 of Bochi the Rock up and ready to go. There'll be two versions, picture in picture, in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep beep timer to count you down. Let's get into it. <sighs> yeah. Well, so very many Terra Terra poses. They didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Not with that attitude. Okay, so might not come. We'll see. P.A. son, can I marry you? <laughs> I mean, I love you. <laughs> okay. We have the aged, aged Dorito. Oof. Oof. I really like that little hop. Kiri kaiete iko? I've never heard that. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> Bochi? <laughs> yeah, it's her get things done outfit. Oh! Oh! Hey! 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 Yay! <laughs> of course they do. Of course she was. Yeah, you're gonna drink all the booze, huh? <laughs> I'm sure you know all of them. <gasps> oh, the two! Hey, 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 hey! Oh, oh, my little heart. Oh, my little heart. Okay. So all the baller, honestly. <laughs> all right, you can ascend in happiness. <laughs> Bye. Fantastic. So all the all the social interactions and and uh, real human interactions have generated actual audiences. Hmm, that's actually a good idea. Okay, everybody's in their rooms, in their homes. Of course they'll tune in, huh? <laughs> 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 Doesn't matter. Play the songs. Puh. We're gonna convert you, pink hair. Pink hair gothic lolita dress girl. Rococo will be on our side. <laughs> if we start, more will show. I'm into it. 
I like the tuning sequence. It's very good. Very good. The lights are on. The stage is set. Let's go, Kita. <laughs> yeah! Fuck you! <laughs> Immediately the fans are in. Yep, let's go. Uh... They did a they did an additional recording where they're not as good. They're not as tight. That's excellent. Yeah, it's the real thing, man. Everything goes wrong on stage. Hmm. Oof. Fuck. But you cannot let that get to you. Right, you can't try to, like, reach out and, and hold on to that, either. It's you. Take responsibility for it. Not like the Sergeant of Rock, but for yourself. No response. They get really restrained. Ah, oh, fuck. Really restrained camera camera movements. Keep it moving, goes Nijika. <laughs> uh boji uh boji why you rocking There's a reason it's called the lead guitarist. Yeah, look up from your stupid fucking tablet phones. <laughs> All right. The fuck was that? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Got her. <laughs> hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Cut away, not show it? Okay. After party. Cool. <laughs> yeah, but eat eat the izakaya food. Eat the plenty of the izakaya food. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? Oh. Oh. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Very metal. Very metal. <laughs> Honestly, it's, many people would. <laughs> Sasuka Senpai. <laughs> Click, click. That was cool. All right. Although tickets were paid for, so. Oh, oh, uh, Ashita no Joe. <laughs> Eat. She does like karaoke. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the is the Instagram? It's a <laughs> it's a good way to say it. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't take it. Oh, amazing. So trendy. So trendy. <laughs> trendy gibberish. Mmm. A triple spice macchiato mocha mocha pumpkin spice. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. No. Oh, God. <laughs> the what? <laughs> she made it up. Oh, she read it wrong. Uh. <laughs> hmm. 55. Mm hmm. No drinking for you, Bochi. What the fuck? Amazing. And gorgeous. Oh, this is great. Oi. Whoa. No self deletes. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to get older. <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> Bochi on the game of life, huh?
Brutal. Brutal. Tick, tick, tick. Right back here. Hell is universal. Yeah. Let's not have that. Yeah. Uh. Oh. I love you, PA son. Honestly, marriage. <laughs> marriage now. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a yaoi character. <laughs> Senpai. Kita. We talked about this when we first introduced her, that there's something underneath that, that she's embarrassed about. <laughs> it's spreading. Mm. <laughs> it is quite fun. Well, it's, it's abnormal for her. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's or, not and, or. Give us some wisdom. And steal your fries. Ah! I mean, she's doing all right, and she's a mess. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, but she's not sick of bands. It's a different, different perspective on it. Yeah, where did she go? We saw her putting on the, the shoes, didn't we? Staring out into space, are we? <sighs> hmm. <laughs> Getting better at snapping her back. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finally. Hmm, I don't know about that. That's a matter of perspective. Mm. You gonna tell us what that is? Holy shit, big episode. Oh, shit. Hmm. 
she's justified it in other ways, but that's what it is. And at least that's how she sees it. That's how Nijika sees it. But if I have friends like you, and she couldn't, she couldn't fix it. for you but she can't say that <laughs> none of that stuff mm, I'll take it God, it's just so right on. She said the... Th she said the thing! <laughs> she said it! There was... There was no OP in this episode, right? And this would be their third song. Maybe. I can see why um, I usually ignore these, but I got a few comments of people saying that this was easily their favorite episode of the show. And it, it nails its beats perfectly. That's really good. It's so, it's so funny to me how I, I wasn't sure if I was going to bring up the comment in the beginning of the discussion, like the pre-discussion. And it ended up being exactly relevant. It keeps happening. Enoshima Escar. Escar? Escar. I don't know. It's in Katakana, but I, I don't know. No sé. Um, okay, two, two things. I, I said these as we were heading into the ED, but first thing is I can see why some people commented that this episode was their favorite episode of Boji the Rock and like and really nailed some things for them. Um, because it, I think it's right on the emotional heartbeat of what drives the show forward and makes it compelling. And I think that they nailed the a portion of the transition point toward moving forward, toward toward goal orientation, toward um all of it, standing up. I think they really nailed it. The second thing is that I'm continuously surprised by how often the wandering, meandering pre-discussion that I allow myself to have. I used to try to tamp it down, right? I used to try to make it quite short in the pre-discussion and, and be, like, right on. And, and even 
think it through and list things out and be like, this is what happened in the last episode. This is what's going on in the next episode. Let's go. Bam. And try to make it as short as possible for, for like YouTube purposes and stuff. But I've been letting it breathe. It's amazing to me how often it ends up being precisely relevant, like precisely relevant. And our conversation that we had earlier about supposing before the proof that there might be something valuable in your existence. That, as the show puts it, you might not be able to see yourself as a hero, but you might be the greatest hero to someone else. And you might not even be aware of it. It's, it stuns me that with such regularity, like once, twice, three times a week, multiple times all the time, what we talk about in the beginning ends up becoming relevant by the end. And part of that is because, you know, there's a flow to a show and so there's there are things that are set up or or placed in the, in the brain so that they, they ferment or percolate and they, they lead you down the, the – or lead me down the logical pathways of – of the next episodes and you know you're thinking in a certain space so there's a, a good bit of chance that things will overlap and then there's the confirmation bias of like well you you had this one idea and the show presents this other idea and they're kind of overlapped and so you see them as closer together than they actually are all of those are fine and fair but it's almost it's like um it's like i want to ascribe meaning to the randomness of it and and maybe there is and maybe there is but it, it demonstrates once more and poignantly that this uncertainty and fear of the future, pain in the present, tragedy of the past situation is the it's the universal situation of human existence. And Bochi's a great character for for painting that writ large in a way that's accessible to to many of us. I really like the concert sequence. Um, seeing characters awaken into themselves and fulfill their potential oh, it does something to my heart. M my little heart. Um, and the most striking scene... So the, the concert sequence doesn't stand out uh, animation-wise to me. Almost at all. Um, it's fine. And, and, and like... More than fine, it's quite good. It's it, like at no point do I look at it and become taken out of the scene or or removed from the the sequence. But the music production is really good because it they captured that feeling of not being quite aligned, not quite having it all together really effectively. And I'm sure that that took a lot of work because it's hard it's hard to get that right so that it feels wrong in the correct way hard but the scene that stands out to me is where uh well we know we now know her name hiroi kikuri uh uh our drunken master sees it about to happen she sees bochi about to 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 grasp the moment about to go for it and there's this little like ah this little moment of her face and then bochi stomps on the pedal and 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 hits it with the full force of her unleashed capacity without all the falsified, just totally fake barriers that are in, in her way. Because they don't exist. They're all manifestations of her mind. That moment of the senpai seeing, see, or I guess the sensei in this case, seeing the student about to become about to embody and, and act mm, it did something to me it was really cool tencho san's attitude is harsh it's harsh realism in an almost hurtful way shit happens deal with it learn to cope but it's true too
Nijika's continuous driving optimism, even when it's not from the heart. Like, it, like she fakes it sometimes. It's unclear to us when. It's not like it's um, set out for us as explicit, but she fakes it sometimes. She'd have to. She'd have to. But her continuous optimism driving the group forward and like, all right, let's not get sucked in, into thinking about how few people will be there. It is what it is. We'll, we'll keep on going. Um, there's also a line here that I want I want the phrase for. I want to know what it is. Kirikaite iko. So iko is go. Kiri. It seems to be an uh, idiomatic. Because the... Unless I've got it wrong. It might be... I might have it wrong. I, I might have heard it wrong. But I, I think it's kirikaite. Conversion, change over, an event that results in a transformation. Cause to change. So like... We'll... Eco, like, we'll keep going despite the change. Take it in stride is the translation, idiomatic translation from one idiom to another, perhaps. Uh, any native Japanese speakers want to help enlighten me on what the fuck this means? I'd like to know what this means. Because it seems like a useful phrase. Obviously, take it in stride is a, a fine phrase in English, but it doesn't have the oomph to it that, that Nichika seems to put into this one. And I'd like to have that oomph. You know, Shogunai, her phrase immediately before it or shikataganai is one of my favorite pieces of um of japanese expression it's it's so expressively useful that's the way it is uh, it is what it is so be it so it goes however you want to express it in the many ways that you can express it in english it's got more oomph in the japanese so i, I think i'd like to have that in my arsenal of phrasing always stays cheerful no matter what happens yeah this does a lot of work to establish emotional space for our later conversation because Bochi's in the mindset of thinking about Nijika and how much Nijika is sacrificing for the band and how much Nijika, how much effort she's putting in. And there's a question underlying that that's like, what drives that? Where does that come from? What, what's really behind that? What's really, what, what fuels this engine of positivity that is Nijika? And it's not a it's not a trivial question. And of course, her immediate her first action is like, then I'll be as rock as possible, and to put on her layers and stuff and her outfit, which is a, a good gag. I'll go all out, just this once. Um, <laughs> forgive me, master. <laughs> so they start to filter in. This gets me through the rain, through the storm. The people that she made an emotional connection with, eye to eye, face to face, for real, they show up. Her family doesn't show up. Most of the other band members uh, uh, sold tickets don't show up. Kita's friends don't show up. None of that is to really knock against those individuals. It's a typhoon, right? But these two random chicks off the street, Bochi, I've used the phrase before, reached into their chests, ripped their fucking hearts out, and owns a piece of that shit now. They're compelled. They can't help themselves. They have to be here. They're fans. And the... The moment a moment later where they say, like, we're Bochi's fans, of course we'd show up, is deeply heartwarming, but just the fact that they show up says enough to me. It says enough to me. It it this is the part in the episode where I, my emotions started going like bam, they got me with this because it it's like well okay what did we say during that during that episode was that opening yourself and expressing honestly enables others to express honestly and the honest expression that they gave was wow that was really cool that was cool I'm into that. That might be as simple as it is, but it's extended. It's like, just even, even in the face of obstacles where they should probably stay home and not go out to a concert, they decide to go out to the concert anyway in order to support the person they've become a fan of because that connection of, of like, truthfulness was made between them. Yeah. Ah. We're your fans. A performance powerful enough to blow away the typhoon. You shouldn't say things like that to Bochi, because she'll really ideate it. I 
think this sequence is awesome. Um, it's, it's very fun. <laughs> as long as we have waiting people waiting to see us perform, but behind behind barriers, right? She she can't like she can't full embody seishun and and optimism uh, as herself. She has to put on a character in order to do it. Actually, that's a good way of thinking about it, isn't it? She keeps Bochi keeps trying on. Um positive and optimistic expressions, but they're so disparate from her persona, from her her mask, the mask that she normally wears, that she feels like she has to wear a different mask in order to um, express positivity. Whether that mask is the right mango box, the most positive of things, or the the sergeant uniform with the stars and whatever. She can't do it as herself. It's about start time and there's really not that many people out there. We got this little doubt. Yeah, but there are other bands fans, and I'm sure they'll listen, and I'm sure more will arrive if we start. All the world's a stage, and we are only players. The stage awaits. Is anyone watching? Does anyone care? About you and your role? about your character and your lines, the part that you might play. You'll never find out if you stay backstage. If you suppose that stepping onto the stage creates the audience, then step out onto the stage. Share what you got. Show me what you've got. Believe that more will arrive if you start. You know how many... So I used to work in, in startup land in Silicon Valley. You know how many people I heard generate ideas and then stomp their own ideas into, into the garbage because there wasn't an obvious waiting audience for them? For example, like, uh, I got this idea for an app, it would do blah 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 and improve the lives of people XYZ ways. But, there's no market for it, and it's not obvious that it'll sell, so I'll just keep working on the thing that I'm working on for a bigger corporation and, and ignore it. Fuck it. Don't need to pursue that idea. Because there's no waiting audience, right? Well, there, there wasn't an audience for Facebook until there was Facebook. And there wasn't an audience for Twitter until there was Twitter. There wasn't an audience for YouTube until there was YouTube. And that's not to say that whatever you create, an audience will be birthed from it, but if you believe that there will never be an audience for something, then you'll never make the thing, and the thing will never get made, and the potential audience that might manifest, that might be drawn by the thing, will never be drawn by the thing. And you'll fulfill your own, your own depressing prophecy. Ah, it'll never happen. Yeah. With that attitude, you're damn right. You're damn right. I'm sure more will arrive if we start. I don't mean to lump, like, metaphysical meaning on a, an almost throwaway line by Rio here, but it connects. It connects. In my head, in my weird, twisted mind that's a little broken in some ways, and getting less so and more so and well, whatever, it, this connects. The stage awaits. The audience is small. Go out and play your heart out. See what happens. The alternative is worse. Definitely. Definitely. Because if you don't step out on that stage, you're just going to regret it. And then you not only don't have the audience, but you also haven't tried, and you know that you've failed to try. If you, if you go out there and you fuck it up and it's garbage and you all suck, and everybody in the audience, nobody cares and nobody pays attention, fine. That sucks. But it sucks way, way less than sitting in the back room going, you know what, I, I think we're just going to not play. The alternative sucks. So you step out onto the stage. And if it takes believing insanely that it, it might get better if you, do, if you do so, if it takes that insane belief that, like, well, that's ridiculous, there's no evidence to support that, <laughs> right? Okay. All of your logic can be brought to bear to tearing that idea apart. It's like, nobody will care about what I do. We'll fuck it up anyway. 
it'll all be just a, a, a catastrophe and we'll regret it and we'll end up spiraling out, living in a van down by the river or in a, becoming a neat hikikomori and getting utterly ruined, blah, 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 blah. You can tear that idea apart. But if you believe in it, then you step out onto the stage and you have a chance. You have a chance. You have a chance. It's a possibility. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the little little tuning sequence is really nice. Everybody dink, 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 dink. Getting everything all ready. Sets up some anticipation. <laughs> does way too polite for a rock band. And away we go. Bam, 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 bam. Da, 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 da. And it starts. And uh, again, I'm not going to play this sequence because I have a... a, a I have a sneaking suspicion that it'll get immediately copyright problemed. But it's clear that they put a lot of effort into making, doing another recording of the song that sounds like it's an amateur band playing the song. And it does. And that's great. It's, it breeds verisimilitude. It makes you feel like it's real. It's, it, it makes the overcoming of the thing better. It's like when the, the shonen protagonist fails to overcome their enemy the first time and you're like, no! but they have to they're the they're the good guy they have to win and then they overcome them. you're like yay it, it makes it makes you feel so much more because they failed the first time it's yay wow it's simple psychology play stuff but it fucking works and so so it fucking works um ah, oh, brutal Br brutal Picking at their nails, looking at their damn phones. Shut There are people on the stage trying to do a thing. Who cares? It's really, it's a really good emotional gut punch. It's like, it's worse than even being rejected or, or put down or insulted. It's like they're not even paying attention. Even if we were to do something great, they wouldn't even notice it because they don't care. So how do you reach into their hearts and rip them out of their fucking chests? So you do something exceptional. So Bochi, Bochi recognizes, because she has a good, good musical sensibility, she recognizes that the whole band is not together. They're not in unison. They're not inspired. They're not doing it. It's not right. And we see it. They, they manage to convey it really effectively from Tencho-san just sort of watching like this is what she expects. Right? Arms crossed, defensive, displeased. Now, we know that she's not, you know, great at expressing her approval of things in general, but this is a disapproving face. And we see that the faces of the, the big fans have fallen because they were hoping for and expecting to be wowed and blown away, and they're not, and they're still going along with the beat a little bit, but it's a little bit unclear where the beat is, and they're like, oh shit, we're stuck here now, and... We said all this stuff about how cool it is. And of course, we get the nail in the coffin, which is the somebody walking away. Ugh. The lyrics fit. It's not enough. It's not enough. No one knows I'm here. Screaming out into an empty, into an empty room. Worse. Screaming out into a room full of people and all of them ignoring you. Way worse. Oh. Oh. They look up at their newly formed hero bochi and she's not doing the thing that they want from her exactly what she expects she's seen them come and go right she's seen dozens of bands that have that we're gonna do a band wow we're gonna do a band. yeah wow and then the audience doesn't resonate with it and the whole band falls apart and it doesn't manifest doesn't become anything ah what a waste of time and kita almost gets sucked into that into that that judgment like ah <gasps> I've been insulted. Nijika immediately recognizes it and is immediately there. Such a good, such a good group manager. Not manager, but like leader. Performance in our songs still aren't good enough. So Boji thinks back to what she's done before that has actually done it. Looks out at the faces of the, the girls who are expecting something of her. Blink. Demo. Chang. Hmm. Do we have a sound effect for that? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. 
<laughs> finally. <laughs> finally! Your true power emerges, hero! <laughs> It's exactly that. It's exactly that. Ah, you're finally going to show what you've got. You've been pushed to the edge. In Shonen Protagonist Land, this is like this is like when the the Blood Knight character who just wants to to battle the strong opponents, right? And has has come up to our protagonist and been like, "I challenge you to a fight." And our protagonist completely isn't in it. Finally, the Blood Knight pushes them to the limit and is like, "What do you got?" actually and finally the hero's like i got this motherfucker and the blood is like oh yeah cool kill me dude kill me come on come on <laughs> show me the meaning of true power <sighs> um something else here foot stomps man foot stomps uh if you want to make an impactful scene there's something about foot stomps that does it like nothing else Obviously, she's stepping on a guitar pedal, and there's there are reasons explicitly for it in the text for it to happen. But in a, in a number of places, in a number of shows, it keeps happening where when you want a, a real shift in momentum and like a, a, a change in the driving focus of the episode and like a character grasps their destiny for a moment or something like that, putting their foot down, literally putting your foot down visually putting your foot down seems to enable that it seems to be a real a real piece of the arsenal a piece of the tool toolbox as a director or as a creator if you're working in visual media and you want to express a character making a change things are going this way they want them to go that way bam this is where it happens have them stomp their foot it works it really works it 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 um there's like some mirror neuron stuff that goes on where you're empathizing and embodying with the the physical movement of it. Maybe it's maybe it's something else. I, I don't know, but it, uh, it seems to really work. I refuse to let it stay this way. Bam! She goes off. All right, and everybody else is surprised by it, and then begins to take it in stride and is impressed by it. Bochi jams, staring at her own guitar. And we turn, of course, there's that soft smile on her face. Uh, and what is the, what does Tensho-san's face look like? Cool. Right. And of course, um, uh, Drunk-san Kikuri is, is pleased, well pleased. Mm, yeah. And Nijika has enough wherewithal and enough, uh, enough sense to take this moment when she can. It's like, go, we, we're, okay, drums. Bam, bam, into the song, and use that as a lead-in. And I said something kind of offhand when this happened, but I want to say it again. There's a reason it's called lead guitar. And anybody in any band, any member of any band, can do something like this, where they, they take up the reins of the thing. And you can do this if you're in any group, um, whether it's a school project or uh, a, a team uh, project that you're working on for work or whatever it is. You can do something to express ability, desire, drive, motivation, and and pull the whole group together by choosing direction, by putting your foot down in some way and stepping forward into a direction. You you can manifest that from the people around you. You can you can generate response to it. And sometimes the response that you'll generate to it is a poisonous inertia. It's like, whoa, man, we don't try around here. We're all just skating by, you know? And that's a good indication that you should get the fuck out of that place unless you want to spiral into into uselessness forever because those people are on that track. But it, it seems like... Well... What if you really tried? Whatever you're doing. What if you really tried? What would that cause in the people around you? They might try to hold you back. That would reveal something about themselves. Less, less about you, and more something about them. But you might, you might cause them to try too. And then you might succeed. And then you as a group might succeed. And you all might get better at trying. And you all might get better in general. And it could all be better. Maybe? Maybe you could maybe you could try. 
Like, really try. We start to reveal the eye. She starts to be able to see. And then they're in flow. Then they're in flow. And it's just going. And it awakens the... <gasps> Everybody's waiting. Everybody wants to enjoy the music. Except for those those two chicks who don't give a shit. <laughs> they just want to... They're just here for their band. But everybody wants to enjoy the music. And so you present them with what they want. And it's like, yeah! Finally! <laughs> Good! The best state of being is flow state. Where you're actively working to accomplish a task and you forget that you exist. Time disappears. Your perception of it disappears. You're not even you in that moment. You're the creation. You're the the work toward the thing. Well, what if, what if you could access that more frequently? Wouldn't that be a market improvement of your state of being? And what if by doing that you could inspire others to do that as well? And wouldn't that be... Wouldn't that be good? I think it would. I think Bochi does it here. I think it does it for all of the band members, and it does it for everybody who's there. Everybody kind of wants this experience to go a certain way. They want to, to be impressed. They want to find a new band to like, maybe. They want all of these things. Everybody's waiting for somebody to step out onto the stage. Step out onto the stage. Show your stuff. We move Bochi more than the other characters. She gets really into the music. And, and it's, a really, it's a really, really good expression of that sort of flow. Like lost in it completely. And it pulls other people in. Ah. And, and that, oh, of surprise has shifted to a slight smile and a little hip-cocked uh, uh, hand-on-hip sort of pose. She's well-pleased. Well pleased indeed. Bam, bam, bam. Bochi, of course, jamming and going off, and everybody turns and looks. It's like, what the fuck was that? And we get, we get, uh, uh, it's, hey, not bad, but it's like, that was a little good, is what she actually says. <laughs> oh, slightly good. <laughs> yeah, slightly good indeed. Let's fucking go. We get this. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, magnificent smug face, indeed. <laughs> Snap. Captured. Nice. Nice. Last song, cut to, cut to the next scene. Gotta hold a little bit in suspense for us. Can't show the whole concert. But it doesn't matter because that's the pivotal moment. That's the putting the foot down moment. That's the stepping onto the stage moment. Once you've stepped onto the stage, all there is is the script and there's the play and there's there's all this stuff. But the moment of decision is the moment you step out. And I don't mean that the moment. Well, I do mean the moment that the, the group, the band literally steps out on the stage because there's the distinct possibility that they give up, right? That they don't do it because they're scared or whatnot. But it's the moment where Bochi steps out of herself out of the mango box, out of the persona, out of the character, and shows the truth to the world. Because Bochi harbors a real talent, like power, ah, resonance, ah, music, ah, just flows from her when she can let it. And that's the moment of, of pivotal change in the episode. And so what happens after that in the concert doesn't really matter. The change has been made, and we know that they're going to nail the next song, at least relatively well. And as a character says a little bit later, everyone is going to leave that concert feeling like they did it. Feeling, feeling good. It's great. Yeah, this is all on my tab except for you. Except for you. All the, uh, the things that she does at concerts that are so, so horrifying. But of course, she's a, a senpai to Ryo as well. Sasuka senpai. <laughs> Blind drunk concerts are the best. Hey, hey. <laughs> I, I treasure when you stepped on my face, indeed. <laughs> oh, there's so much about rock that I have yet to learn. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> please, please don't. Keep it up and you'll pick up fans. Work hard for your next concert. And pay your quota fee. You know, there's this... I get this impression that Nijika and her sister have... They've got a good relationship, but they're not great at communicating the really deep, important stuff. And so, 
this moment where she says she lays out the path it's like keep it up and and it will work keep working nijika's honed in on that like waiting for every word needs more of it needs more the the sister character as we showed at the very beginning is like is trying to demonstrate the difficulty of life to nijika it's like your youthful optimism must it must come to terms with the uh, the harsh struggle of reality well she's doing that out of love she doesn't want her little sister to get crushed by the world but she doesn't share her her optimism or her belief in her very frequently and so that little moment of like if you work hard you can do it oh, is a wash for nijika it's like a, it's a big thing it's important uh, Bochi goes full Joe, have some food, and again we pull her out of it. Um, um, I think it was I think it was Johan. I'm I'm not going to go and check. Uh, mentioned that in the previous episode, the mom uses the karage to pull Bochi out of her dissociation, and here we do the same thing. Um, literally we bring it back to karage, but back to food, back to reality, back to eating around a table, back to the normal things that are human and that we must do. Uh, to snap her out of that that spiraling that she does why do you care about this instagram thing anyway and um she's got a really good perspective on it i i have a pretty cynical perspective on certain aspects of social media partly because i was working on working on them and saw the way that a lot of the people on the dev side see the systems that they're working on as as purely ways to exploit the the users for information and profit um but there's a a potent flip side to it which is that there there is real emotional value there there is real sharing and expression and social reflections and as as kita says um giving people a piece of the fun taking the fun that you're having and sharing it out with more people. There are all sorts of unexpected repercussions of doing that, but on the face of it, that seems like a good thing to me and a good way of looking at it. So, it gives me some food for thought. Will it, will it change my opinions about Instagram and Facebook and um, the meta ecosystem in particular Probably not, but but it is something. Kita! <laughs> twisted spirit? She doesn't seem twisted. She's so nice. What? Kita! It's too powerful. It's too powerful. I can't look. Ah. Pure, relentless optimism. <laughs> and then... The best thing in the episode. Hey, this Isekaya thing is kind of fun. I wonder if they'll be even more fun when I grow up and can drink. And just pan over, Boji loses herself in a completely different world <laughs> of, of fucking sad salary men getting getting toasted, getting absolutely blasted and talking about their potentially cheating wives and how bad their lives are and the, the misery of existence. And it's a completely different place. And it's a totally different vibe and theme and framing and, and color scheme and everything. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Very cool. Uh, it's also quite animated. Yeah. Well, uh, drink some more. <sighs> That's my path. And she begins to think about, I'm going to have to get a proper career too if this whole thing doesn't work out. So all the pressure, all the pressure, all the pressure, all the pressure is on this one thing and it is maybe but viewing it from that perspective warps it and twists it it stops being and and an end in itself and it becomes a means bochi playing guitar is an end in itself it's something that she values in and of itself genuinely loves for itself put all of the burden of your life's existence on top of it and it stops being that end in itself it becomes a means and that infects it 
it's part of the danger of making your passion your career or your work or your job or however you want to to view it. And it, it, this is something that I struggle with because, well, that's what I've done in many ways. And it's amazing and, and fantastic. And I've done it in such a way that I have inordinate control over it with inordinate potential to fail or, or equivalent potential to fail, you might say. But it's a it's a dangerous game. In a lot of ways, it just demonstrates how quick Bochi is to spiral into the worst possibility. I'll have to get a proper career, and that means endless failure for me because there's no way that I could rise to the challenge of a proper career. She probably could, though. We put her on the game of life and do this little, <laughs> this little visual. Click, click, click. Fail to make a debut. Get a job. Wow, 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 wow. Fail at that. Obviously, you'll fail at that. And everyone will make fun of you. And they'll they'll scheme and maneuver in order to harm you. And you'll end up selling Tokoro Ten door to door. I don't know what that actually is. Noodles. Transfer to sales department, fail at door to door sales, stress quit and become a shut in. Yeah. There's no hope for me. No hope but this one thing. Spiral, spiral, and we're back to the exact same frame because hell is universal. I'm I'm really uh, it's sort of a, a patting myself on the back here, but somebody wrote in the comment on the first the first drinking episode on episode I think seven. Um, why or it would have been episode six? Why is Bochi in Rudy's room in Earth Dias's room? Why is it the same room? It's the same place. And I responded to that comment quite quickly. The response bubbled up, and I've said it a couple times now. Hell is universal. It's the same hell. I think it's really good to have a worst case representation like this for yourself, whatever that would look like for you. My um my English teacher used to say, and then you'll end up living in a van down by the river. Like she would use this as a phrase fairly frequently. It'd be like, Well, you'll 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 fail this class and then you'll <laughs> drop out of school and end up living in a van down by the river as her way of presenting the worst case scenario, the thing that you're most afraid of that, that would be like the, the path that you know that you could take if everything went wrong, if you did everything wrong. I think it's really useful to have, have that in your mind as like, that's, I don't want to get closer to that. Does this action that I'm taking get me closer to that? Does this inaction that I'm taking, because usually that's more like it, get me closer to that. Does my choice not to act, not to step out on the stage, not to do this, not to do that, this, 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 does that get me closer to being a loner, shut in, drunk, failure, who hates themselves? If so, don't do that. Of course, it can lead to you spiraling out in thought and cutting yourself off the knees because you're so terrified of the potential of the, the dark future, but it's really useful to have that as one representation and the goal as another representation. And that's sort of what we set up in the second half of this episode is like, if this guitar thing doesn't work for Bochi, she sees endless hell for herself. And if it does, there are these dreams and collaborativeness and the working with Nijika and making other people's dreams come true and the shining up on stage and the lighting up of the the faces of her fans and all of these things could be the way that it could go. You get this balance. Two paths that diverge. <laughs> and she's down. They, they, they do go along with it here, and they're they're joking around, putting her face back together, right? So we are continuing down that path. I, I had expressed that I was curious if we would, if we could keep going with some of the delusions. And in this case, we do. Gosh, really, really looks like a bad yaoi character. <laughs> it's, it's excellent. And off she heads. Um, the Ikuyo name thing is cool, and we get to see what's under some of the surface of of what Kita actually fears about herself. And we get some words of wisdom from 
someone who's still making it despite the drunkenness and the insanity. And we got all those those expressions of how she shows herself on stage and is like the, the worst kind of and still is doing it. Hasn't ended up in a van down by the river. Maybe should. Maybe will. But hasn't yet. So maybe it's not. Maybe you don't fear it as much. Chill out and enjoy yourself. If you put the weight of success on your own shoulders all the time, you'll just make yourself miserable. You have to enjoy the process of making your dream come true. Which is, in many ways, something like making believe. <laughs> making believe. We so weird that we phrase it that way. Make believe. You make beliefs. I don't believe in myself. Make yourself. Make believe. I don't know. If I even if I dedicate myself completely to this thing, and you never think like this, even if I dedicate myself completely to this thing, it'll never go anywhere and I'll be useless for her forever. And then I'll end up living in a van down by the river. Yeah, how about not that? How about make some belief? Believe that the path that you're on might lead to your dreams coming true and that would be worthwhile and then you can step you can step outside of the hyper focus on it and look around and experience the process and we bring up the band that she quit playing and she <laughs> i got sick of bands oh it's so it's so perfect people never know why they act the way that they act we're always capable of justifying it in reverse and and going backward and saying well i did it because of this and it's almost never true. And sometimes the people around them see more clearly than they do. And sometimes they don't. Like, it's not clear whether Nijika's actually correct that that the sister quit the band and started Starry in, in order to make it a place for her. It may or may not be so. But Nijika sees it as such. And it's, it's a layer of truth, certainly. But Tensho-san can't, can't see the contradictions in her own statements. She's justifying backward. Shut up and drink. Eh? And Nijika's been gone a while. So Bochi goes and does the friend thing and pursues her friend in order to speak. Uses the weather thing, it's been cold, and opens the floor. <laughs> Summer break's gonna be over. No, it never ends. It never ends. Bochi-chan, back to reality. Snap. Huh. Getting better at it, right? You're a guitar hero, aren't you? And we do the reveal, and it's no, it's no big ba-boom, gong, gong. But of course it is for Bochi. I finally noticed, and that makes me happy. I didn't hide it on purpose, since I'm anything but a hero right now. I wanted to wait to tell you until I fixed the way that I am. Not worthy. Not worthy of the name. Can't see herself at all. At all. So what if you, in your incipient, insidious, inertial, self-hating, spiraling bullshit, can't see yourself at all? What if you have no idea of the ways in which you matter to the world? What if it's the easiest thing in the world to forget them? Not just to get down on yourself, to, but to believe yourself worthless. It is the easiest thing in the world. It's easy as hell. And it's false. And it's false. And if you believe it is false, it will be false. I wanted to wait to share my truth with the world until I had it worked out completely. Bullshit. You're just scared. I'm anything but a hero right now. Bullshit. You just can't see it. Now, that might not be true for all of us or for, or for you in particular, because you might not be a hero right now. But you could be. But you could be. And the way that you get there is by stepping out onto the stage regardless. Especially you, Nijika-chan. What you, what you think of Bochi means a lot. Made me all the more happy to have you. She expresses her dream, how it relates to her sister. How it relates to her own family dynamics and problems. It all seemed so shining to me. It was never happier anywhere else. 
I was her inspiration for quitting her band and starting up this club. And maybe. Nijika certainly believes that. And it fuels her. Starry is a place my sister made for me. A legacy that I have to live up to. Though I bet she won't admit it, and maybe doesn't even believe it. You know, when you press her, she says, well, I just got sick of bands, and she might really believe that. Is to make a band popular enough for me and my sister, and make Starry even more famous. Ah. But when I actually started, I spent a while thinking that it was kind of out of my reach. I wasn't sure. And everyone was so disheartened. And the usual Nijika that usually perks up everybody and is chipper wasn't there. It was starting to fade. But every time things are looking their worst, you're the one who breaks through it for us. You were one heck of a hero to me today. I've got a theory about that. A little bit. It's hard to know what to do when everything seems down, when everything is coming up wrong, when nothing seems to work, when it's all darkness. The people who are most capable of navigating those situations are the ones who spend the most time in the darkness. So coming back to our little unintentional theme of this episode's reaction and discussion, the time you're spending right now in the darkness, without direction, without understanding of what it could be for, it might be for this. It might be so that you're ready. So that when everything else is dark and everyone around you doesn't know what to do, you've been here before. territory that you've explored and so you do know what to do it's all it's a little bit of a pollyanna way of looking at things a little bit rose tinted but what if the struggles that you experience could perfectly prepare you for the stage you're to step onto the role you are to play the role you could play. Maybe your capacity to be a hero is exactly equal equals the amount of darkness and despair you have lived through and can frame as overcoming and then can grapple with and say, well, I've overcome a lot and this is like that and so I can do it again. Every time, you're the one who breaks through it for us. The poster child for despair is the one who knows how to break everybody else out of it. She lives in it. Born in the darkness. Raised in it. Ah, ah. <laughs> Bane! <laughs> ah, they really nailed the delivery of this line. You were one heck of a hero to me today. You really were a hero. You live up to your name. Ryo wants this. I want this. Kita wants this. All of them are investing themselves into this band. They've all invested their hopes into it. They've placed this um potent emotional currency into it. I like the phrasing, the use of investment. Not just they've placed their hopes in it, but they've they've invested. You could say that they've made believe if I put forth of myself into this collaborative work, it will manifest out to me the things that I desire from it, which are different for each of the individuals. Each of them sees it as an end in itself and as a means to greater ends. I want to make it the best band it can be, and also... The whole making money and we don't have to finish school, please. <laughs> uh, what does she say here? Taksareta. Taku. Entrusted. But now I know it for sure. Having you with us will make our dreams possible. So keep showing us more and more. 
of Bochi Zarok. She said the line. Okay. Agreed. Mm, burning hearts. Set your heart on fire. Fuck. Fuck. It's like the, none of you have fucking seen Detroit Metal City. The, the, it's so relevant. There's the the manager for that uh, uh, has this tendency to like say a line and then just end it with fuck. <laughs> God, that shit was so good. Fuck. <laughs> go watch. Go watch Detroit Metal City. Oh my god. Mm. Come come back and tell me what you think of that shit. Ah, <laughs> oh, they nailed the emotional beat at the end of the episode. They nailed it at the beginning of the episode, all the trepidation, all the fear, all the all the the lack of clarity. They nailed the the hope of the incoming audience members who are really looking for this good time and the the feeling so tough, awful even, of not living up to your potential despite knowing that you could do better. And the feeling of actually being up on stage and trying a thing, because if you've ever practiced a speech or or a song or you know anything, you get up for a real recital or to actually say the thing in front of an audience and it all goes to shit immediately. So it's a different experience than the practicing. You're, you're trying, right? You're being judged. You're being watched. It's completely different. They nailed that. They nailed the loss of... Loss of motivation. Loss of drive. Loss of brilliant dreams. The shine falling out of it. And Bochi stepping, stomping, putting her foot down and saying, No, we're going this way. And bringing herself to bear, showing what she's actually got, playing like she means it, and leading. Not through, we're all going this way, but by doing it, just going. Go the direction, and people will be caught up in your wake. Go the direction. And the, the expressions of the, the characters changing, the shine coming back into the concert, the, the smug face. And the after party where we hash it all out and get to talk a little bit about the the dreams that underlie everything that are the reason for the being for the playing and for the sharing and for the showing that was a good episode of anime that was a good episode of anime good job bochi the rock i know that each episode of bochi has been pretty good this was a good episode this was good good writ large big letters uh metaphysically good has the power to change people really change them really have an effect on humans that's awesome you know bochi in universe changes the direction of her band right makes the choice to make the play to change the direction of her band but bochi out of universe changes the direction of a bunch of people Ma materially for sure i could say it with certainty that there are human beings whose lives are different because they've seen bochi the rock and because of this episode in particular, because it stands out, it's, it's got a something to it. It's got a heart. And we resonate with that heart, and it's real. That's, that's as real as real can be, and realer than real. I like it. I like it. Big thumbs up, and we'll leave off there. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you sticking around for my uh, insane ramblings. This is what I do. I ramble insanely, and sometimes it resonates. In, in extraordinarily often it seems to resonate at least with me it's shocking fucking crazy and a part of that is like well maybe if i maybe if i speak honestly what i feel about the thing and how i feel it might go and and what i feel uh, in general and in my in my daily life and in what i'm thinking about maybe sharing that with the world could enable other people to share honestly their own truths as happened with the comment that we discussed at the beginning and grant more layers of resonance and experience with these things that are important centralizing gravitational magnetic and and potent potent maybe it would be worthwhile maybe if i believe it 
if I make believe it. Maybe I could make some belief in myself and in others. Wouldn't that be cool? What if they could make more belief? What if more belief would be good? What if, what if, what if? Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you believe in yourself. That's not a... That's not, I hope you feel this way at present. It's, I hope you choose to believe in yourself. Make yourself believe. Could make all the difference. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week for more Bochi. Peace.